Okay, so um, what we're going to have now is this um, igniter session, and this is uh, going a little off interactive, but I'd like you to be thinking of questions as people talk. Um, after this, um, after uh, 10 of these, we're going to break out to tables and you'll be able to ask more specific questions, brainstorm, etc. This is where we hope to really generate some value. Um, but right now is just sort of listen, take notes, write down some, uh, write down some good questions. And thank you very much for uh, um, that very rich um, reflection you've provided over there in the meantime. So first up um, is someone I'm very excited to um, um, present to you today, Noah aiken Clark. I met Noah recently in Winnipeg at Disrupt Dead, uh, the event uh, there talking about um, RBC Future Launch. Um, those of you who may not know Noah, he's uh, not a banker. He uh, actually comes from uh, the uh, foundational sector, the, the, the charity sector, with a background at um, Trillium Foundation. So um, please welcome Noah. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, that's loud. Hey, thank you very much. Um, so I'm Noah Ikenklar. I'm from RBC. I only have five minutes, so I'll be very quick. Uh, why am I here? Why is RBC here? So uh, as Don said, RBC has made a very big bet, uh, the biggest bet it's ever made, and it's a bet on youth. Uh, and it's a bet that if we invest in young people, not only will they be more successful, but every generation will become more successful. The economy will grow. We will all, we will all benefit. Uh, so that is uh, the bet we've made. It's a $500 million bet, uh, and it's an investment that we call RBC Future Launch. So uh, through RBC Future Launch, we've begun to figure out what is going on with the skills economy. And last year, we released a report called Humans Wanted. I don't know if you've seen it, but if you haven't, you should check it out. It is really about what does the next five, ten years look like in terms of skills, in terms of the skill economy. Uh, and we know already, and I think a lot of you are here because you know what we know, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a pretty interesting time, as Confucius said. Um, we know that 50% of all jobs will be disrupted within the next 10 years. Uh, we know that, uh, despite the fact that unemployment rates are, are at record lows, they are masking massive underemployment. Uh, and that for young people in particular, the real unemployment rate is in fact two to three times higher than the average unemployment rate. And that's of course specifically true if you are indigenous, if you are black, if you, are, if you face other barriers. So we know that there are problems festering right now uh, that will come back to haunt us if we don't do something about it. Uh, so we want to do something about it. And that's why we're here, because we are interested in figuring out what are the skills young people, in fact, anyone who's interested in reskilling or upskilling, uh, but specifically for those people entering the job market, what are the skills that they need to have to get those jobs that don't yet exist or that do exist but will look incredibly different uh, in the next decade? And I want to share a story uh, as a food for thought for you as we continue this conversation, which is that uh, it's actually an interesting story. So it was Remembrance Day weekend of last year. I was actually also in Winnipeg. And uh, I was taking an Uber to a conference to speak about the future of skills. And my driver and I struck up a conversation because he, when he found out I was from RBC, was interested in a job. And I asked him, uh, well, what does he like to do? Well, what does he want to do? And he said, I will do anything, uh, which, was not, which was very uh, encouraging, but not particularly helpful. Um, and then I asked him, well, well what, uh, what, what, are your, what, what are your skills? What, what skills do you have? And the answer he gave me shocked me. He said, I have no skills. And I was, first of all, I thought, I hope you can drive. Because uh, it's a long drive. Uh, and he seemed to be able to do that. So I said, you obviously have some, you, ha you must have some skills. You look, you're in your mid-twenties, you know, by the looks of it. What have you been doing? And he says, well, I dropped out of high school. So right away, for him, the fact that he did not have that high school diploma, that initial badge that we all think we need to have, uh, had been a signifier to him that he had no skills. So we said, well, okay, you dropped out of high school. What have you done since high school? And this is where he just floored me. He said, I've been serving in an Afghanistan for the last eight years, and Iraq. I've been on the front lines uh, in the military, and I just got back. 
And he said, I have no skills. And this, of course, is probably the most skilled person any of us will ever meet. When you think about all the, the soft foundational human skills that we've been talking about, critical thinking, complex problem solving, collaboration, cultural awareness, cult empathy, when you're working with people who speak different languages in high stress zones with teams whose very lives depend on it, this person has all of those things. But what he didn't have is he didn't have the ability to articulate those skills in a way, either for himself or for a prospective employer, that could cut through the hiring process, cut through the connections that needed to be made. So the conversation around badging is key. I've got 30 seconds. Oh, that's what the conversation around badging is key because RBC, like all of you, need, we need to find ways to have that conversation with prospective employees, with the future of talent. We need to find ways to recognize the lived experiences, the real skills people have, whether they're because they've completed something or they've, it's because they've earned something through their experience. But to do that, we have to help them articulate those skills. We have to have them articulate it in a way that they can translate it to the employer or to others so that it's recognized and trusted. And then, of course, we need to figure out how to support them to continue to develop those skills once they get that job. So that is what RBC Future Launch is about. I'd be happy to take questions or talk about it later or whenever the opportunity arises. But I do encourage you to check out Humans Wanted, which is a short but pithy report about the skills economy, what jobs will be created, where, in which sectors, what skills are needed for them. And also RBC Upskill, which is an online tool that I actually went through with my Uber driver to help him identify what career paths might be suitable to his skills. And uh, I'd love to talk about that as well. Thank you very much. And the challenge people can work at on your table is? The challenge people can work at on your table is How do we get, first of all, young people themselves to, artic to better, better articulate the skills that they have? And what kinds of skills can they get without having necessarily completed something? How do we recognize skills that aren't as a result of completion, but are as a result of the experiences, the diverse experiences that people have through, just through living their lives? Using maybe open badges. Using technology. Okay. Like RBC Upscale? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.